Triple E EDC back again with another knife video. This is the Benchmade Saibu. It's discontinued, but um, it's still available at a couple of retailers, and I figured I'd do a video before it's all gone. So let's go ahead and do some size comparisons. This is the Spyderco Para 3, Spyderco Paramilitary 2. This is the Benchmade Griptilian and Benchmade 940. This is the Benchmade Bug Out and the Mini Bug Out. These are good size comparisons because this is an in-between size. And last but not least, we'll do the Monterey Bay Knives EWC and the Spider Coast Chaparral. All right. Um, Let's go ahead and talk about the good and the bad of this knife. So, first of all, the aesthetics on this are awesome. You have uh, this Mil G10 that has nice texture on it. You have Coco Bolo wood here. You have uh, the Coco Bolo accents on here. The blade shape is quite nice. The uh, um, it, it's got this flow through construction. And uh, one of the things that I like that's a really good touch is something that's also present on a really high, high end knife, the, the um, Koenig Arius. So look at the hardware on the Koenig Arius, right? Uh, not necessarily this over here, but the pivot. It, it has that sort of indented, almost conical, you know, interior of a, of a cone type uh, sh shape to it. Look at the pivot here and look at the body screws. You get that, you get those details on a knife that's much, much, you know, I, I can't say low end because this is actually sort of a mid range uh, knife. It's priced around 230 bucks, but you know, Koenig Arius's are six, seven hundred dollars, and you get some of that detailing on here, which is which is a nice touch. I like it. So the next thing is the blade shape. The blade shape is really useful. It's very similar to the Rat One and Rat Two blade shape from Ontario, and everyone sort of knows those blade shapes. They're very utilitarian. Uh, no problems whatsoever with them, uh, and this gives you sort of a smaller size option with that blade shape, which is quite nice. It's got the mini deep carry clip on here, which is great. Uh, the it's one of Benchmade's best clips. Uh, the mini deep carry and regular deep carry are probably the best. This one will have better retention than the uh, regular deep carry, which tends to loosen up over time. So that's quite nice. And um, uh, by the way, one thing to point out is this lanyard does not come standard. So just be aware of that. Uh, the uh, I like the backspacer on this quite a bit. It's got that bamboo look to it, and um, so I, I really like that backspacer. And then uh, the Bill warning on here, Nakamura's symbol, I think goes very well with, with his designs. You know, it has that, uh, the designs are sort of the, uh, take, draw inspiration from different Asian cultures. And this, uh, this symbol does as well. And I think it's quite nice to have on the blade, even though I, I'm not normally a fan of bill boarding. So blade here, blade steel here is 20 CV. 20 CV has uh, probably the best balance of any knife steel. It's the same, chemical composition is M390 or 204P, and it has the best balance of, uh, of of the main things you want in a steel, the edge retention, the uh, ease of sharpening, the toughness, and the, um, uh, and the corrosion resistance. So this is a great steel, great choice for a knife in this price range, and also, and Benchmade does heat treat it pretty well, so that's good as well. The, this is very light. Uh, this is a, a great summer carry. So you guys who want a knife that has, you know, liners, you know, this has steel liners, a little bit more solid, uh, but it's still light because of all the speed holes in both the steel liners and the uh, the actual G10 and, you know, Coco Bolo wood itself. Uh, this is a great, great summer carry. And, uh, you know, coupled with that mini deep carry clip, it's very nice in the pocket, despite a little bit of thickness. I will point out the little bit of thickness here. Uh, if you wanted to know exactly how thick it is, it's uh, it's a little bit thicker, as you can see, than the, this is the mini bug out. So just be aware of that. All right, uh, so those are mainly the good things. Let's go ahead and talk about a couple of bad things. So first of all, let's talk about the ergonomics. The ergonomics are just okay on this. This is about a five out of 10. Uh, and the reason for that is I have size large gloved hands. And as you can see, this is about a three and a half finger knife for me. So I don't enjoy that. I like a full four finger knife and I would prefer to have one. By contrast, the mini bug out, which is actually slightly smaller, uh, actually gives me a full four finger grip. So why is that? This is a smaller knife. Why does this give me a four finger grip? 
Well, as you can see here, this allows me to be very close to the blade right here. So I'm getting and using pretty much all of this handle. However, on this one, I have to be, this forces me to scoop back. So I'm sitting back on the blade now. There's a couple of problems with that. One is it knocks my pinky off the blade. Two is that it creates too much space between here and the blade. I like to be on top of the blade. Does this stop me from getting on top of the blade? No, I can, I can do like this and bear down, but this is not comfortable for my pointer to be doing that. And I de definitely don't enjoy that. I like to be closer to the blade. So that's a little bit of a problem for me. Uh, the, the Another thing is the clip right here. So this is a little bit ugly. Now, I understand you, you have uh, tip up, right hand, left hand carry, and this is a production, you know, uh, production knife. So we want to make it accessible to both righties and lefties. I will say uh, most of the time I support, you know, two, two way or four way pocket clips. But on this particular design, I think this just takes away so much from the rest of the design that I wish they had left it off on this particular knife. So sorry, lefties. Um, that's what I would prefer on this particular knife. However, you know, they have it there, so lefties, you're good to go. So uh, th those are the mainly ugly things. Uh, one last note is the price is, is about 230 bucks. So for the materials you're getting here and uh, considering Benchmade's you know, comparable knives in, in the price range. I actually think that's fair. It, it, it's a little bit high. Uh, it's definitely competing against a lot of really, really nice knives in that, in that price range. And I wouldn't necessarily, you know, say that this is going to be the first one I would recommend out of all the lists of knives that are available over $200. But I will say that it, it does hold its own. It's very, it, it's a good knife for the price. And if you can get it for even cheaper, especially, you know, from some of the stores where it's discontinued, I would definitely recommend picking one up, uh, especially if you can get it under 190 bucks. So uh, then I would definitely recommend it. At $230, honestly, there's a lot of knives I'd take before it. And so uh, my recommendation would be, um, you know, uh, if this, if you like the styling and you're good with the size on it, then this is a good knife to buy and I can recommend it. Uh, otherwise, I would say there's other things available in the price range that are just, uh, that fit more of what I'm looking for in a knife, including that'll get me closer to the blade uh, and be a little bit slimmer in the pocket because this is a little thick uh, for a knife this size. So that's it. Uh, if you guys want to hit the subscribe button, I'd appreciate it. Go ahead and drop a comment. Let me know what you think of this uh, of this knife and uh, of the review. Also, go ahead and hit the like button and hit that subscription bell so you can get all my content. Thanks so much.